going to go through the process of drawing a few of the example problems from class. First off, we're going to draw a rectangle measuring 32 millimeters by 47 and a half millimeters. And we're going to actually constrain this to the third quadrant. So the top right of the rectangle will be at the origin. So we're going to start a new document. And the first thing that we're going to do is check our preferences or make sure that our units are in millimeters and just make sure you click and hit millimeter and okay make sure that my snap to grid is off my view cube looks correct and now i'm going to start my drawing i'm going to right click the unsaved and create a new component normally i would also save this and under component one we'll click once and click again and we'll call this Rectangle, example one, enter. The component is the active component based on this dot, create sketch. And I'm going to select the X and Y plane, which would be this bottom plane right here. Or I can go to origin and select my plane from this list here. So let's do it from there. I'm gonna select X and Y, and now I've started a new sketch. My options and constraints are always on the right side. And if they're in your way for drawing, you can always minimize them and then bring this back up when you need them. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to select my line tool or press L. And I'm just going to draw four lines and they're purposefully going to have no constraints predetermined. So they're just four connected lines. That's the only piece of information that this object has. There's a couple ways that we could turn this into a rectangle. I'm gonna personally start with horizontal vertical. I'm gonna make sure that that's vertical and that's horizontal. That should make this a right angle. And I'm gonna use the perpendicular and make this and this line perpendicular. I'm gonna make this and this perpendicular. That should constrain this to a square or rectangle shape. If I click these two, it tells me I'm over constrained. So I know that this horizontal, this is vertical. This is 90, this is 90. So this has to be 90, this has to be 90. The next thing I'm going to do is dimension out my piece. And I'll click the top and I'll select my dimension. Going back to the example, I want 32 by 47 and a half. So I'll make this 32 and I'll make this 47.5. This looks kind of small, so I'm going to zoom in a little on my drawing by hitting F6, which will fit it to the window. So now that I've got my 47.5 by 32 millimeter rectangle, I need to do one more thing because all of these lines are blue. And I'm going to use the coincident tool to take this top right corner and bring it to the origin. And if you look, everything is now black and I have completed this particular sketch. This one is done. The next example was creating an isosceles triangle with sides at 12 millimeters and base at 10 millimeters. We also want to center the triangle on the origin. To stop the sketch to go on to your next sketch. The next thing I'm going to do is right click my document and create a new component. I'm going to call this isosceles triangle example one and press enter. Now we can see that this is the active component. I can still see the sketch from the previous drawing. So what I'm going to do in my browser is just hit the light bulb on the rectangular. Now that's gone. I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm going to do it again on the X and Y. This time I'll select the actual physical plane and I'm going to just use my line tool L and draw a random triangle in space. Make sure that there's no actual constraints, but it looks like a triangle. The first constraint that I'm going to apply is the horizontal and that ensures that this particular line is always horizontal or uh, in parallel with the x-axis. The next thing that I need to do is use the equal constraint 
the isosceles triangle has two faces that are equal. So I'll select these two. Now those are always equal. Now I've created basic geometry for an isosceles triangle. And the last thing that I'm going to do is create dimensions. So if I look back here, my sides are 12 and my base is 10. So I will click this side and this is a 12. And as we zoom in, this should be 10, it's close. And now I've created an isosceles triangle with sides 12 and 10. I know that this is also 12, so it does not need to be dimensioned. It's equal to this side. The last thing I need to do is coincident the triangle to the origin. It's sitting way up here in space. So in order to do that, we could try to move it, but there's no way I can just lock it in. So if I select the line and try to snap it, it's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to move this out of here for a second. And what I'm going to do is use the construction line tool. So I'm going to draw a line and select construction. Then I'm going to make sure that I snap to the top and I'm going to come down at the base. And if you notice the triangle that popped up, that means I'm at the midpoint of the base or that line. That's always true. Anytime you see a triangle snap to a line, that means it's the midpoint. So now I've got somewhere to find the center. And again, I'm going to ride the mouse or the cursor along this construction line until I find that triangle. And there is the center of this line. So I'm going to bring that at a 90 degree to the 12 or I can put it at a 90 degree here just so I have a reference point. So I've got midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. And again, if you, if you want to find all geometries, you can put that line at a 90 degree there as well. We know that this is the midpoint. If I actually connected to this corner, I could also bring this to the midpoint of this line and find the true center of my isosceles. So depending on the example and how it's written, this is pretty ambiguous. You can find the center at the origin. So that could possibly be interpreted as this center, this center, or this center right here. But I did all of them so you know. And what I'm gonna now do is select the coincident tool and I'm gonna choose this intersection point here, and I'm going to coincident it to this piece right here. Let's try that one more time. There we go. And now everything is constrained, the lines are black, and that drawing is complete. The construction lines are not part of my actual drawing, and in order to make sure that you've done that right, if you hover over the whole shape, it turns blue. If I took one of these lines and made it a full line, you can see now it splits into two sections. So just make sure that you denote it and don't forget and leave it as a full line. Don't forget to save.